It'll be one to go this time by. Coming to the green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, go, go. Dig, dig, dig. Go, 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 go. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. There's one more question upstairs. That's fine. I got all the time in the world. <laughs> I tried to cut you off. Sorry. <laughs> Carl Bryan Smith, That's Bristol it. Herald Courier. Uh, outside of everything with Kyle, how was the actual racing night at Bristol? We're a year now into the car tomorrow. It started at Bristol. How was it for you? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if, if I like this better than the old. I like them both, you know, and they both have, uh, you know, the way the track was before and the way the track is now. I think the fans see more true racing on this surface rather than give and take and nudging people out of the way, you know, for every position. Um, so I think this is better, and um, you know, I think you're going to see exciting races here for a long time to come. It, it does. It is hard to pass, extremely hard to pass, but the track's small enough that there's always something going on. We'll Nate upstairs. Ryan, USA Day. Uh, Carl, a uh, couple of things on Kyle. One, he got summoned to the NASCAR hauler afterward. Are you yeah. expecting to have to chat with officials too? I don't know. Um, I probably will. Okay. Uh, secondly, uh, I hate to play he said, she said here, but, but Kyle said that um, you'd run into him at Milwaukee and a few other times before. And he, he I think he was alluding to me running into Clint Boyer, which is true, I did. And, um, you know, that was, uh, that was a little different deal. What was your question exactly? That, that was it. I mean, is there a history there? I mean, there, this is not the first time you guys have sort of bumped into each other this season? Yeah, the history I remember was him running into me real hard at Richmond. That's the history I remember, so... That's that. Last question for you, uh, or at least for me. Um, the 500 laps here tonight, 499 of them were led by you in the 18. Is that, is that kind of how the season's shaping up? I mean, you expect that he's going to be you versus him in the chase? Boy, um, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I, I guess it remains to be seen. You know, it's like I said last week, if there's, if there's only one guy I have to race, that's awesome. But uh, I have a feeling, you know, Jimmy Johnson and, you know, Matt Kenseth and Greg Biffle and, you know, Jeff Gordon and Tony and all, I mean all those people are are real good at their jobs and I think they're gonna probably be all be very tough. All right, Joe. Joe Menzer, NASCAR dot com. I noticed Again. the feel good thing. You, you like that? In. That was funny. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll do another one here this week. Um this is for Carl and, and Jack as well. Uh isn't this isn't this thing of style sort of exactly what NASCAR needs? I mean and, and is this the beginning of a maybe a great rivalry? I don't know. Um, you know, if we if we're always racing around one you know another, and we bump into each other occasionally, it's it'll probably be uh, pretty fun for the fans, you know. So I don't know. I'm just uh, glad to be fast enough that we're up there racing like that right now. So you never know. It, it's going to make a lot of real interesting commentary from the fans on the talk shows. You know that uh, Claire B and. <laughs> A lot of the folks will really be enjoying enjoying that, but uh, you know the the great rivalries uh, have been uh, celebrated. You know the first time that, uh, uh, that the NASCAR had a race that was recorded live. I don't remember the year, but I remember it was the Daytona 500, and and Cale, uh, Yarborough and the Allison brothers got one uh, hairball down the backstretch there when things went bad uh, to their mutual dissatisfaction. But you know the the rivalries have been something that uh, have attracted interest and and generated the uh, the. Uh, you know the the positive and the negative feeling of the fans, and and uh, I think this has been a year when there really hasn't been any rivalries. You know, Dale Walter had his rivalries in his time, and Rusty, of course, had his. And uh, uh, this this may be starting a new era, but you know we don't need to have rivalries to make the racing interesting for the racers. You know, we're happy to race clean and and to celebrate a victory and to. Uh, to not have a lot of discussion about it, we'll we'll try to put this all behind us by uh, by middle of next week before we go off to Fontana. But this will be talked about for a long time on the talk shows. Claire B. Lang, XM Satellite Radio. Yes, it will. And I'm wondering what you think about rivalries in sports in general and and in NASCAR. But Carl also want to say that you uh, were relentless and that you almost have to be relentless to win this chase. Yeah. Um you know, for me, what's up, Dave? Go easy now. Um, so, uh, I don't know. For me, that I, I'm to the point, um, and I'm I'm content with uh, with how I race and and how I am, and 
and you know, for me, it's just uh, go out there and do the best I can, accomplish the most I can. And rivalries are just fine. If uh, you know, it's fun to watch. You know, I know as a fan of other sports, it's always neat when there's something going on, some story behind the scenes. But uh, for me, it doesn't change anything. We just have to go to California and win. And um, you know, you just kind of have to keep that in the back of your mind. And uh, what was the other question? Yeah, hey, every you know all the guys that are running up front. You, you know, you, you know myself and everybody that's running you know, that that runs well uh, at this level. You know, Kyle's a guy that exemplifies it. He just drives the wheels off things, and I think that um, that you have to be that way. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you have to do things and uh, like what happened tonight. But uh, but everybody does it, and I'm sure it'll be done to me, and this will be used against me. But that's the way it is. All right, and we have a question upstairs, one last one, I believe, up there. Carl David Poole from the Observer again. You sort of touched on as we talked about what J.D. said the whole week, what you sow, and, you know, the whole back and forth. And I guess the question that, that we will bandy about this week is, at what point does the paybacking stop? At what point does it even out? And are you, the little, are you a little bit concerned that basically this is just opened a whole other can of worms that you're going to have to deal with going forward? I guess that's, we'll see what happens. I mean... Honestly, not too worried about it. I feel like I was extremely justified to do what I did. I needed to do it, and that's the way it went. And you know, let's make it real clear: I'm not apologizing for it. You know, and that's it. You know, I feel like this is uh, scores even, and it just cost him more than it cost me at the time. And that's the way it is. I think we have one more upstairs. Uh, yeah, Nate Ryan, USA Day again. Uh, Carl, I think you got asked this in victory lane, but just for the record, you're still not a believer in momentum. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. Jerry. Uh, Jerry Bunkowski, I was sports again. You know, we talk so much about the sport, about data, you know, getting information, that kind of thing. Going into this race as a driver, do you think about things like the last five races, the guy who's led the most laps here hasn't won. Now it's six in a row. Do you think about that thing when you're out there on the track? No, it's <clears throat> the sample size isn't large enough, you know, to come up with a reasonably accurate statistic. You know what I mean? There's not enough, you know, over maybe 100 or 200 races or something, you could get something. But I think that this race is so many, so chaotic, there's so many things going on that you can't really predict, you know, based off of statistics. I, I've learned that in this thing. You know, all, all the time you hear a new statistic like, well, that guy, you know, won the race from the farthest back anyone's ever done it, you know. And um, I think that there's so many things that change in the sport, it's hard to say things are always going to be a certain way. All right, great. Do we have any more questions down here? Any more upstairs? Right, Paul, awesome. Thank Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.